Good morning. Let's start this uh, beautiful morning with prayer. Father, we bless this Friday. Let your glory manifest, Lord, all day today. Hallelujah. Let it be the starting of a brand wonderful weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Genesis 19, 30 through 38. It's one of those unthinkable events that took place. And I think Bible really records this unthinkable stuff so that we'll all know that these things happen <laughs> in life. It's unthinkable for us, but it was already done. Uh, so this is word of the Lord. Afterward, Lot left Zoar, the city of insignificance, because he was afraid of the people there. And he went to live in a cave in the mountain with his two daughters. And then the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, and there is no man in the land to sleep with us, as in the custom of the land. <laughs> custom of the land. Come and let us make our father drink wine. And let us sleep with him, and let us arise, raise up seed from the father. So they made their father drink wine in the night, and the elder went in, and they lay with his father that night, and he knew not when he slept and when he rose up. It happened on the next day. The firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night, let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. That night they again got their father to drink wine, and the younger went and slept with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she got up. Thus, both of the Lot's daughter became pregnant by their father. The older daughter gave birth to a son named him Moab, and his ancestor Moabites today. When the younger daughter gave birth to a son, she named him Benami, and he became the ancestor of the nation now known as the Ammonites. Moabites and Ammonites. Wow. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about them later in the uh, Genesis and, and subsequent Israel history. Not so favorable, is it? But uh, bluntly put, this is the first case of incest. Uh, usually the incest case uh, in the world is because the father is abusive uh, and things like that. In this case, it's the daughters who volunteers. How do you deal with that? Well, first of all, there are some hint in which that we could get why this thing had to happen that way. He said here, so Lot went up out of Zoar. Zoar is the city called Insignificance. He became a loser. He lost everything, lost his wife. Uh, well, he didn't know, but his wife became the symbol of foolish woman for next millennia. And now he didn't realize that he's going to be the uh, main character of first incest uh, episode in human history. <laughs> not a very good record. But he, in that way, I guess he did not live an insignificant life. He lived a notorious life. Zoar. Now, why did he get out of the Zoar? Because he feared feared. Now it's uh, driven by greed at one point in his life. He rather see his uncle suffer than he rather prosper. The greed led him to Sodom, but now he's terrified. Now fear drives him. He was greed driven one point. Instead of repentance and come to God and God driven, he's now fear driven. So he feared to dwell. They were afraid that he'll be killed by this man or maybe this 
people accuse him. So anyways, whatever the reason, afraid. Wow. But there is all kinds of Old Testament scholars arguing that these two daughters may not necessarily his own. Because uh, although it's not in the Bible, some tradition states that he married a woman with two girls. So these are two stepdaughters. Um, but that, that to me is arguing for something that is not even stated in the Bible. Because verse 31 says, and the firstborn said unto the younger, right? It doesn't say firstborn of Lot's wife's first marriage. So we don't know their father. It does. So when, when Bible does not talk about it, don't imply it. And don't try to put a value. What is silent of the Bible, keep it silent. Whatever he says, take it at his face value. The face value is firstborn of Lot said unto the younger, hey, my dad is getting old here. Um, and we don't have men to sleep with. Now, Calvin argues that probably uh, they have some slaves because he was, in a way, not an average Joe. He, he lived well. He was wealth. And I'm sure, you know, when you're given like, let's get out, you probably can get a backpack full of gold or currency or whatever. That's how he was able to survive. And probably, and because their argument is archaeologically for you to have a wine in the cave, in the mountain, you must have some kind of helper. You must have contact with some men uh, who could actually bring this Wine was not in a plastic bag. It was in uh, like a jar, earthen, earthen jar. So uh, they are suspecting that probably, I mean, to say that well, there's no man around, it's unbelievable, you know. And they said, well, probably uh, Calvin wrote, yet they say that there were no husband for them because they have an aversion to a marriage with slaves. <laughs> because slaves were considered property like animals. So these two girls rather have sex with his father than slave men. We don't know, but that's what Calvin said. So don't, don't knock me down. <laughs> that's what Calvin said. Uh, he says, come, let us make our father drink. The word drink actually is not drink, but drunk. So contemporary English version is correct. Let's get our father drunk so that he wouldn't know that who he's sleeping with. The word drunk in Hebrew is what's takena. And in English, the old English is quap, 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 quap. Quap is drinking portion, something in alcoholic heartily. So drink a lot, you know, I don't know how many bottles of whiskey that you need to drink to be knocked out so much that you're having sex and you don't know who you're having sex with. You know, in, in Korean, they said, oh, the film was cut. It, 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 favorite, you know, the K-drama always like have these young people or, you know, enemy or whatever they are at a, a business luncheon or dinner and then they start drinking Next morning, they find themselves in a motel together or something. You know, it's sort of like that. I mean, how much? How much do you need to be drink? So this is what Calvin said. Lot not sinned knowingly yet, because his drunkenness was the cause of the sin, his guilt is diminished but not annulled. So he's not not innocent. He is in a way he accidentally killed a person because, no, actually, he got drunk and killed a person. D-I-U, D-U-I. Yeah, he was not intentional murder, but the fact that he drunk, he was drunk, was driving under influence, uh, makes him liable. 
Why did you drink so much? <laughs> and listen to the word that the first daughter says to his, let us preserve the lineage of our father, right? Preserve, to revive. Our family name has to go on. Come on, sister. <laughs> and so the younger sister, persuaded by the first, okay, uh, makes him drunk. It says they lay down, uh, had sex, but Mo, uh, Lot did not know. Uh, concerning the word that Lot did not know, Lot did not perceive it, that the daughter lay down in a road. Some explain it thus that he saw no difference between stranger and his own daughter. So some theological uh, uh, scholars saying that, yeah, he recognized that he probably had sex, but it's just he didn't know who he was, right? Maybe that's how uh, Jacob, remember, first night he, they made him drink and then put older sister instead of the younger. Maybe it's that kind of scenario. But nevertheless, he is guilty. And the consequences, oh boy. <laughs> the first daughter gets pregnant, give a birth to a child named Moab. And the second daughter has a boy name and becomes the father of Ammonites. When there is sin, sin give a birth and then it perpetuate, and then consequence is death. Paul says in Romans 2, 5, that wicked after long pleasure of sinning are at the end deprived of all fill or grief thereof. Such stupidity undoubtedly had cut up those girls because they did not shame themselves to spread their dishonor everywhere. So, Calvin makes that judgment call. Wow. So daily gospel question today. Have you experienced such blatant sin displayed as virtue? Right? What about storming the Capitol in America? They were waving John 3.16. They, they're going to be martyr for their Messiah. And some of them, not all of them, some of them are just stupid. And some of them knew exactly what they're doing, but they were still blatant. The sin of blatancy. Vulgar. Wow. Lord. Keep us safe from this sin of the world today. Keep us safe. Let us do everything in our power to stay away, get out, uh, stay pure before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Mwah.